we are recording. So I am really excited about this interview today with um, Susie Cook and Charlie Adams. Um, they're both speech pathologists who um, are now part of the ICA International Cluttering Association and have done a lot of great work with uh, speech pathology, um, stuttering, and with cluttering. So, uh, so that's uh, that's my introduction. But could you both introduce yourselves? Sure. Um, I'm I'm Susie Cook. I'm originally from Germany. I'm a speech language pathologist um, from Germany, but now living in the United States, and um, I. I'm specialized in fluency disorders. Um, it started basically shortly after I um, graduated in the 90s. And um, yeah, I, I became interested in cluttering based on um, like a little bit more research, but also based on becoming um, more uh, in by getting more in contact with um with clients who cluttered with um I, I used to run summer camps for kids who stutter but i also had a few children in there that had um cluttering and stuttering together and that kind of like spiked my interest and then i started to research more into that area oh cool so that's um uh, that uh... That, that's really interesting how you got into cluttering, um, um, cluttering and working with uh, working with folks with cluttering. And then Charlie. Hi, uh, I'm Charlie Adams. I am on faculty at the University of South Carolina. Um, I have been uh, specializing in stuttering um, since I was hired here, um, teaching a graduate course in stuttering and. Um, I'm, you know, it's interesting. I'm trying to think how I ended up working with cluttering. Um, I had, I think I've counted maybe four patients over the years who clutter. And um, I also attended a meeting at ASHA um, to, uh, that, that was a meeting to uh, sort of establish the Cluttering Association years ago. And, um, uh, really enjoyed it and have um, done a lot more work in cluttering since then, much of it with Susie. And um, it's been really great working with the Cluttering Association. And it, it's, it's certainly uh, opened a, a few doors for us and we've gotten to meet a lot of great people. And certainly um, it's been nice to be involved in um, helping to educate people about cluttering because it still remains such a poorly understood um, um, disorder. Cool, and um, I, I want to get in. Um, I want to get in a little bit more to your um, journey in, in into into getting into cluttering. Um, but I think now would be a good time to talk about the ICA and uh, the, the International Cluttering Association. So, uh, so um, I think I think. Charlie, um, Charlie is mentioned prominently on there, and Susie did a lot of the work in making the new website, right? She did all of the work. Oh, <laughs> so, um, so, so Charlie, how come your picture is like great big on the front on the front page, and Susie's the one that did all the work? Well, I'm I'm currently the um, the chair of the Cluttering Association. That's why you see my picture, but soon you'll uh, see okay. Susie's picture because she's the chair elect. So. <laughs> Cool, cool. So, um, so, 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 who's the um, who's the International Cluttering Association uh, website for? Um, what uh, what what kind of resources are there and and that kind of thing? So, um, it's basically a, a website for everyone who is interested in cluttering. Um, we have parts that are of interest for people who clutter that actually uh, give information. Like, if you come across or someone tells you, hmm, you might have cluttering, then you can come to our website and you will find more information about that. But um, also for speech language pathologists, because as Charlie just mentioned, um, it is an area that is um, a little bit um, not prominently um, taught as well in courses, if, if I'm correct, Charlie, if I understood you correct. and. Um, so as a speech language pathologist, you can also find resources on the ICA website. For example, the predictive cluttering inventory um, 
even translated in several languages. But we also have um, information um, like like contact points in in a, a huge number of countries. Um, where people, like, for example, if you're anywhere in the world and you want information in your own language and you don't find it on our website, um, then you have a contact point you can contact and ask these people for more information. Um, oh, and, and that's, really, uh, that's really cool because it's, uh, like, like, one of the questions I see a lot on, on forums is, hey, well, is there someone here that knows about uh, cluttering? So that's, that's really cool that you have that as a, as a nice resource. Yes. Um, yeah, and then we also have our newsletter archive. So since 2016, actually, our newsletter got revived, and we have um, two editions each year coming out, and you also find them um, on, on the website. Oh, and then which, uh, which part of the website is, is that? Because I... Uh, it's I basically... Like... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh uh, no, uh, no! That um, that was basically my question: is is which part of the website? Because I because um, I looked at it earlier and um, and went uh, went through it a little bit, but I didn't I didn't see anywhere that jumped out here the previous newsletters. And if I remember, I I think I've only read one of the newsletters, and it was really really good. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's um, basically titled newsletter archive, so it's on the top. Um, you can. You find basically first um, the homepage where you find Charlie's picture and his welcome letter. And then there is a section about us where we explain who we are and who is who in the ICA, um, mm -hmm. including the international representatives. And then basic information, um, what is cluttering, a cluttering assessment. There is also information like for a scholarly or academic um, interest. Um, and we explained um, our conceptualization of cluttering. And then we have a tab for consumers. We have different translation. Currently, it's eight different languages. Um, we have different resources, such as like a library where we um, present books on cluttering, for example. But then the last one is the newsletter archive. And there you will find actually all of our newsletters since 2008. Okay, uh, that that's that sounds really that sounds really cool, and uh, it's a really it's a really nice looking uh, website. So so is the old it, um, well, I noticed um, Klaus is no longer updating the old website. Is, um, is the old website kind of in competition uh, with the new website, or does this like totally uh, totally override the old website? So we are currently working um, with Klaus and. A huge thank you to class who um, looked after the website for so long and actually got us started with it. Um, we are currently working with him so that the old website will be taken down. And we just currently, like recently, I mean, um, purchased um, an, a URL that's a little easier to remember. So it is just icacluttering.com. Um, so if people in the future want to find um, the ICA website, it's easier to type that name into your browser. Um, cool. Yeah, so uh, we are working on that. Yeah, and I saw that um, I saw that link somewhere. I think I, I think when I googled uh, uh, when I googled ICA cluttering or something like that, then I or, or I think ICA speak, then uh, th then that was one of the results. So, uh, so so that's cool that you have a new website. Yeah, and and Klaus did a whole bunch of work with that um, back when back when he was uh, r running that. I was just worried. Oh, well, what uh, if, if something happens with Klaus then? Or or, or, or it, it, it's it's a website on a university, so, and and those aren't those aren't necessarily the most stable uh, things. So. So, so I was in fear of, of like, well, what happens? Uh, what happens if the university website gets hacked or whatever, and or or, or if or if class takes a long vacation, um, then all that stuff might be lost. So, so it's really cool. It's really cool that it's well. It's really cool that he made all that stuff um, because it, um, he 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 just had a lot of really cool resources, and, and it's really cool that you're migrating it into a more um, modern, uh, less uh, less like attached to university website. Yeah, that was basically our goal. Cool, cool. So, 
Um, so, so a question. Uh, um, I want to. I want to kind of throw. Uh, uh, well, ask a. Uh, the usual question is, what's the difference between stuttering and cluttering? Um, but, but like in in almost all of my videos, then we talk about that a little bit. So I want to go in a little bit different direction. And since you're both speech pathologists, are there any things that you found that work for both stuttering and cluttering? That's a great uh, because I'm I, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of stuff like uh, like like um, w well that's um, that's different like with stuttering than uh, with stuttering than a lot of with stutter or a lot of with stuttering is about relaxing and not 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 worrying so much and then cluttering is kind of the opposite the more that you focus on it the, um, so so anyway uh, my, uh, my questions um, kind of trying to throw you a little bit of a cur curveball and say what's uh, what what kind of speech therapies or 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 speech or or things have you found that actually works for both stuttering and cluttering? So the main area, if I start us off, and then Charlie, you can chime in. Um, I find is important in both um, stuttering and cluttering is the identification, um, and identification as in finding out what do I do when I speak and what do I do when I speak disfluent, whether it is cluttering or stuttering. Um, so, um, and that is something I found in my summer camps when I worked with um, kids who stutter and who cluttered, that both were really, it, it was important for both groups basically. So that was, is one area I want to say um, that is yeah. overlapping. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I would add to that. Um, um, I think in both cases, uh, you need to work on awareness, which is basically the same thing. So um, with, uh, with stuttering, it's an awareness of what you're doing to adjust for the stuttering, right? So it's the avoidance that you do and it's the, the struggle and the push that you use to get through the stuttering. And with cluttering, it's really, just an understanding um, that your approach is a little different than most people and that um, how, even though it makes sense to you, doesn't mean it's gonna make sense to everybody else. So it's sort of keying in on the listener's experience um, in, in the case of cluttering, but really working on awareness in both cases. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's, that's really interesting, especially with stuttering because uh, because most of the people that I know with stuttering are very acutely aware that they uh, that they have that they have stuttering. So so how would um, I've um, I've heard um, I've heard from estimates and, and and I don't know if there's any like anything reliable, but that cluttering is about as common as um, stuttering is is that uh, would you both say that's a fair assessment or or, or what, what would your guess be? I'll, I'll, Susie's been uh, taking a lot of the load here, so I'll, I'll start with this one. Um, the, the short answer is we have no idea how common cluttering is. Um, and I don't know that we're going to know anytime soon because people who clutter, by and large, have no idea that they clutter. Um, some of them think they stutter and some of them do stutter. Some of them stutter and clutter. But um, because cluttering is so poorly understood, it's really hard to get a grasp of how common it is. Would, would you agree with that, Susie? Yeah, and that was um, basically also one of the big reasons why a few years ago the ICA then um, decided we wanted to have that, um, that task force or that work group that tries to um, help with a better definition of cluttering or to come to a consensus for a definition um, because one of the studies Charlie and I did together with um, speech language pathologists was um, to find out what is the common knowledge about cluttering within the profession. And we found that about 50% of the SLPs who responded would not be able to diagnose it. And one of the areas they identified was lacking was like a common agreed upon definition. And um, when we worked, um, in the ICA then, um, we came up with the conceptualization of cluttering. But again, it's, it's like Charlie said, very difficult because we, um, 
we have ways now to describe it, but we still don't have like a, a, a firm definition where we can say, okay, this is cluttering. And therefore we can then distinguish, okay, this is cluttering, this is something else. So many percentage of the population are people who clutter. It's hard. Yeah, and that's, um, so So would you, um, um, just, um, just hazarding a wild, a wild guess, and and I don't want to get you guys in trouble with your universities for uh, for um, making un unsubstantiated claims. But uh, uh, but but just your your gut feel. Would you say that cluttering's uh, more common, less common, or about as common as stuttering? I I would I'm going to guess that it's less common. But again, um, I I think that many, maybe most people who clutter are only vaguely aware that they have difficulty communicating mm -hmm. um, and therefore are unlikely to seek help for it. Um, so for that reason, again, it, it's really hard for us to, um, to, to put, a, put a number on that. I've seen a, a handful of people who clutter over the years and, and of course, um, dozens and dozens of people who stutter. So um, pe that's part of the nature of cluttering is, is poor awareness that, that you um, have difficulty, right? Mm -hmm. So um, seeking help is, is uncommon. And then Susie, what's, uh, what, what's your answer to that? Is, is um, just your, uh, your 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 gut feel. Do you think that cluttering is um, as common, less common, or more common than um, stuttering? So, from the experience of the number of um, people I've seen who clutter um, within my professional career, I want to say, I would probably think it's less common, but it's very difficult to say. Um, oh, how, and, and, and actually, that was going to be uh, that was going to be my uh, my next question because obviously, uh, obviously the uh, the people that come into speech therapy are go, uh, uh, you're going to have uh, like, like even if you have a big sign on the front door saying uh, folks with cluttering uh, welcome here, uh, but um, then you're still going to have like way way more uh, folks with stuttering come into your to your speech clinic than people with cluttering. Um, so, um, so, so anyway, I'm, I'm sorry to I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I, I was I, I was wondering more just, just just like if you randomly picked like a thousand people on the street and then um, did an assessment with each with each of them, um, do you think you'd find more uh, more more folks with cluttering or more more folks with stuttering? I, I don't. Um, know. Okay. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, and, um, I don't know. And and um, and this is uh, well, well. This uh, this is this is probably much different than how uh, than how speech pathologists talk to each other, or um, or, or 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 how like um, university uh, folks folks talk to each other um, too, because you're not just uh, um, you're not just talking about like wild, unsubstantiated guesses, like uh, like uh, like someone like me um, has the has the liberty to. So um, so so my. Um, my, uh, my my wild guess on that is the clutterings um, probably about four times more common than stuttering, um, but uh, but like Charlie mentioned, uh, and, and I think that like Susie mentioned, it really all depends on the definition uh, because because like the definition that I have in my head, that, then cluttering is very very common, um, but uh, um, but 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 we don't really have an agreed upon definition, and so um, and so, um, so 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 without that, then. It's really actually hard to um, difficult to answer my question about um, how, how many of these uh, um, how many people fit into this thing that isn't yet defined. Um, there's not really an answer to that. Um, so could I, oh, could I yeah, just um, do one, one more remark? So one thing that came to mind to me is as well that um, you probably find a lot of people when they talk that they have faces where they talk fast or maybe mix up syllables or, you know, um, are not understood, but in certain situations, but then um, like, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't necessarily know whether that's always cluttering or it's probably not always cluttering. And one interesting thing that I 
was very eye-opening to me actually was when I was at that first um, conference on cluttering in Bulgaria. Um, I had um, the fortune to met also people who clutter, who we, we got into really interesting and great conversations with, and they told me um, they knew something was wrong with their speech, but they weren't really sure what it was because they did not really fit the category of stuttering. And I think that might also be a difficulty that um, even if you're aware something is not really right with your speech, but then um, nobody can really tell you, oh, it's cluttering or, you know, it's like if, if you don't really know what is wrong, but you feel something isn't, isn't smoothly or right for you in conversations with others, I think that might also be difficult. Like how did you experience something like that, that you were aware something is different with your speech, but you weren't really sure what it was? Um, so, so for me, um, for me, I never would have described it that way. Like if, um, if, if you would have given me like a questionnaire in high school or, um, or, or, or like the, uh, what, uh, what's that, what's that super long test that, that gives you the four letter acronym, uh, um, like, like E. Um, oh, the, the personality yeah. testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so um, is it, is it Meyer, Myers-Briggs? Yep. Okay. So, so if, if on the, if on the Myers-Briggs um, uh, um, test, then the question would have been, is your, is your speech the same as other people's or different than other people's? Then I, uh, then I probably would, uh, well, it wouldn't have worded it that way, but I, but I would have picked, yes, it's, it's the same as other people's, uh, like, like not really, uh, not really ever thinking about it. Um, I know, um, I, I, I was aware that I didn't really, or, or, or that I was quiet, um, because everyone, um, everyone told me, oh, well, Joseph, like, like when, when Joseph talks, then he really has something to say, um, just because I, um, Um, but, but I don't think, um, I don't think that I ever like, um, thought, oh, well, my speech is different. And, 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 and like, even, um, I, I've mentioned this a few times, but even when I went to get diagnosed at the speech language pathology center, um, I, it, it didn't actually occur to me there. Um, I'm here for my, um, I'm, I'm here for the way that I talk. Um, but, uh, um, like, I know, um, I know that's, um, I know that seems like impossible to like walk into and see the big science speech language pathology, um, on the, um, on the side of the building and not, um, well, it didn't say exactly that. I can't remember what it said, but, but, but it had the word speech in it, but, but I never connected, like, even as I was walking in, oh, well, my speech is bad or, or, or significantly different than other people's. So, so um, Joseph, when did you learn that you cluttered? Um, I, um, I, w I was like 27 or 20, 25, somewhere, um, somewhere in there. Um, my, um, the, um, the, dean of, the dean of my college, uh, the dean of my college sat me down and, and said, hey, well, uh, well, he said a whole bunch of really, really vague stuff. I think he was trying to like, um, he was trying to like, um, break, um, break it to me, um, break it to me softly. And he said, Hey, well, um, I noticed you had some struggles with communicating your point. He said something like that. And I was like, struggles with communicating my point. Do I, it, uh, is that really, is that really me? That, that doesn't sound like me, but, but, but like people describe me weird ways all the time that doesn't really like fit, fit. So I was like, like okay, okay. I'm just, I'm just listening to him. And then he said, um, I have a, I have a friend at the, at, at the speech center that can, uh, um, that, uh, that, that I think he can help you. And, and he talked about how like speaking is really important for your career. And, um, and throughout, my, throughout my whole life, I wanted to be like good at giving public speeches. So, uh, so, so I thought, well, I don't know, I, I don't really know what he's talking about, but maybe at the speech center, they can help me to, with my goal of getting good at pu uh, public speeches. So, um, so, uh, so, so, so that's, that, uh, that's kind of me, uh, or th that, that was kind of my thought going in there is, hey, well, well, the dean of my college is, is strongly encouraging me to go to the speech center. And, and, and I always had this goal of, of being good at public speaking. So, um, so, so whatever they have to say, I, I can probably learn something from it. Um, so, um, so, 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 so I don't know if that really makes sense, but, um, but, but yeah, um, 
um, actually like saying it makes me uh, makes me sound like, hey, well, why didn't you realize there was a you had a problem with your speech because your university professor is basically telling uh, telling you, but 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 he said it like really really vaguely, so. Um, so, so I guess um, I guess I have a little bit of a reason to not um, to, um, to not connect everything together. But um, but um, but yeah, that's uh, uh, that's that's kind of interesting. And I, and kind of my um, kind of my personal theory is that um, pretty much nobody except for um, speech language pathologists and like superstars and like uh, like U.S. presidents who, um, uh, who 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 give who give speeches all the time really actually are aware of how how disfluent they are, and uh, um, because uh, um, because if you take um, like like if you take a hundred random people on the street and say hey I'm tape recording you, um, and then say okay now I'm going to play it back. Um, probably about ninety to ninety-five percent of those are like, no, 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 I don't want to, I, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear. So, um, so, so anyway, my, um, my, my theory is that folks with cluttering like me aren't unique in that they don't understand how disfluent they are, uh, because I think pretty much that's everyone except for you guys and Barack Obama and like five other people. Um, <laughs> It's um, it's just that it, um, it's just that like generally people are unaware of how bad their speech is, but most people uh, most people especially people who aren't um, aren't aren't cluttering um, have have good enough speech that it's not uh, uh, um, that it um, or, or, or uh, they uh, they don't have bad speech, so there's no reason uh, there, there's no like reason that they need to realize oh I I said this this way I repeated this word. Because it only happens a few times a, a day, or a, um, ra um, rather than like constantly and consistently with everything. Uh, d does that make sense? It does. Now you said something interesting there, Joseph, um, that I'd like to talk about. You talked about you used the word bad a couple of times, and um, so you're equating bad or poor speech with less fluent speech. And I don't. I, I, I think it's probably more healthy to think about speech as being more fluent or less fluent rather than better or worse or good or bad. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and probably, I, um, pro probably, I shouldn't, probably I shouldn't do that. I'm, um, the, um, um, especially because the word bad has a lot of negative connotations to it, but I, I kind of pick that so that I'm not um, spending 20 minutes of the interview talking about um, my philosophy on that this isn't actually bad. Um, so, um, so, so, so I'm really just using it to sim simplify. But, um, um, but, uh, but yeah, if um, you make a good point that especially if if some mom is watching that her child just got got diagnosed and I'm saying that my speech is bad and she's like, oh well, he's saying that my kid's speech is bad. Uh, I, I I don't want any moms out there crying as they watch this video. So, uh, um, um, so, um, so yeah, I'll try and think of a better word than bad to describe disfluent speech. So, um, um, so, 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 any other, um, any other thoughts on on that before we move on? Um, I did think of something else I wanted to touch on. Um, you know, as a profession, we are speech and language pathologists, so we work with speech disorders and we work with language disorders. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me, certainly stuttering is a disorder of speech, but cluttering is as much a disorder of language as it is a disorder of speech. So, um, it's it's a difference in thinking as much as it is a difference in talking, if that makes any sense. Oh yeah, th yeah, that totally makes sense. And and that was one of the that was one of the challenges for me when I was first diagnosed. Is is I realized that that um, I realized that as they were explaining um, cluttering, and I was starting to research about cluttering that that um, it, it, and the, the the harsh way that they say it that's in some books is that uh, is the folks with cluttering um, don't uh, well they say it a couple ways uh, folks with cluttering or, or um, people with stuttering know what they want to say but they can't say it where with cluttering then um, they don't know what to say and that's why their speech is is um, what, what well um, <laughs> that whole um, uh, um, to me that whole like saying sounds worse than calling 
disfluent speech bad. Um, but but the point uh, the, the point of that is I realized that my speech is really really intermingled with how I think, and I've always really liked the way that I think, and so I um, so so it was kind of a mental um, challenge for me is okay how how do I improve my speech while still preserving the stuff that I like that's in my head. Um, so, so, um, so, so, um, and, and that's a good question for your, for both of you, since your, um, speech, uh, um, speech language pathologist is how, um, um, if, if I want to keep thinking the way that I think, which, which I think kind of mirrors my, 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 my actual speech is kind of disorganized and, and, and jumping, um, jump, um, jumping around and seeing connections in a, like, great big um, uh, great big like thinking space if I want to preserve if I want to preserve that but but still uh, um, but change my speech so that it's fluent how do I how, how do I keep thinking the same way that I'm thinking and change my speech or or is it even possible um so I feel I mean what we are talking right now about is more the language planning aspect I guess and um I often feel it's important to um, know that you can't change your speech or your language planning in every single situation in your life. And you probably also don't want it, right? You said it yourself, you like the way you're thinking and it's your creativity and everything, it's part of you. But if you are in a public speaking situation and you know you want to come across as a um, confident speaker and you want your audience to understand what you're saying, um, then in these situations, you probably can plan out your language prior and um, um, have for this situation control over your speech and over your language planning, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I would add to that. Um... Um, as someone who clutters, you have the um, rare advantage, uh, which is that you know that you clutter, Joseph. So <laughs> because you know that, um, you know, you're, like you said yourself, you're aware that you tend to jump around a little bit as you're communicating. And so because of that, you also know that you need to check in with your listeners to see if they're following along with you, right? Um, and if they're not, maybe try to clarify um, as you go. So um, one of the hallmark features of cluttering is poor awareness, poor awareness that there's an issue. And um, so again, you have that advantage, which is that you know that you need to check in and make sure that your listeners are keeping up with you. Yeah, and that's, um, that's, that's really interesting because like even before I found out about cluttering, I was very, uh, I, I've always been paying very close attention to if people are listening to me or not. But you, um, you mentioned something very interesting, which is uh, basically like, like having techniques to like, like check in. And so I think, I think I just like, even though I'm pretty aware and follow, follow along is my listener um li listening to me or not i don't I, I don't think i have like a bag of tricks or a toolkit of like well do this do this do this i think i have like zero like things nat uh, naturally so so uh, um so, so that would be a really interesting like um thing for me to develop is uh, um, um just uh, just because like sometimes i notice my listener is um like, like like going going away and i just have no idea or um going away or phasing out or or, or thinking oh i don't know what the guy what, what the um, what the heck this guy is talking about and i really have no idea what to do about that so um so um so that's really uh that's really interesting um and and a good um and a good point so thanks for uh, thanks for mentioning that so 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 what um uh, what things have you both found that work with cluttering so I like for that question, I currently work with a high school student and we have basically a little list um, for him to check um, if the, the listener actually gets what I'm saying. And it's basically coming down to um, confused look of the listener or his answer might not match my topic, then I might know, oh, he probably didn't get what I was trying to say. Um, he is 
um, asking, uh, can you say that again? Or he is just walking away and thinking the conversation has ended, something like that. So it's basically a list and we practice it with role play. How do I identify if the listener did understand me or did not understand me? How does a confused look look like? Or how can can this can the kid actually identify if the answer doesn't match the topics? Things like that. So we practice it. Um, and and then we we are going the next step and try to generalize it and in, in first in um, control situation, maybe in a little group session, but then also when the when the kid goes in in his classroom and I check in with the teacher or I'm with him in the classroom, but not directly interacting with him, but observing and see is he able to generalize it. I would I would add to that also. Um, it can be helpful to contrast cluttered speech with speech which is not cluttered. So you want to be careful how you do this, but you can, for example, shoot a little video of your patient who clutters and maybe contrast it with some other video or, or just play it back and watch it together and, and um, help your, your patient recognize um, why it might be difficult for somebody to follow you, for example. Um, and I have, and this is, um, this is not something that I will always recommend, but with the right patient, you can also, um, I don't know if you're familiar with delayed auditory feedback. Um, if you put on uh, headphones with delayed auditory feedback, um, that tends to have an interesting effect on speech for people who clutter. Um, in my limited experience, um, it's made them more fluent. And again, if you watch that together, you can contrast that speech with their speech, which is not delayed and therefore more cluttered and help them appreciate at least what's going on. I really think awareness, working on awareness is really the best thing you can do working with cluttering. So not so much as a means to um, help them be more fluent as to help them recognize why listeners are gonna struggle a little bit to keep up with them sometimes. Right, and that's, um, that's, really, that's really interesting because I used a delayed auditory feedback uh, machine in in speech therapy, and I've used um, various uh, various things or, or various like delayed auditory um, feedback like apps and stuff like that afterwards. But the thing that I've never done, uh, which which you're suggesting, is get a recording of myself and um, getting a get a recording of myself on delayed auditory feedback, and then watch that. So so I've never actually done that. Um, and, and, and that would be really, uh, that would be really interesting. And, and then especially interesting because, because I think, uh, well, especially with me, I, um, it's, it's really hard for me to control my rate. Uh, uh, now, uh, now I, now I can much better than I, uh, was, was able to before, but like, but like 10, 20 years ago, it was impossible for me to speak at a rate that was uh, like to speak faster, to speak slower, it just, just I couldn't I I I didn't know how to do it at that point, and and one of the things uh, like delayed auditory feedback doesn't sound natural and like like one of the criticisms that you hear as well I don't want to talk like a machine, but the cool thing about your approach is if you videotape that person but uh, like like one of the big mental blocks is well. I can't talk that slowly because nobody talks that slowly. But but if you, uh, but but I but I'm guessing that if you were to videotape someone on the on the delayed auditory feedback, and my uh, my reaction is oh I am speaking so slowly that like nobody speaks that slowly, um, and then and then you play it and you realize oh well actually I'm even on delayed auditory feedback I'm still speaking faster than Charlie is, so. <laughs> So, um, so, um, so, so I really like that approach, um, especially of recording and playing it back because, uh, um, because that's, that, that's something that's really hard for folks with cluttering is just to really get a frame for what, what would a normal, like, like I know people are telling me to slow down, but slow down to what? Um, and, and you don't want to, uh, like, like I don't want to talk too slow because then I sound stupid and I, and I never want to sound stupid. And so, um, and so like what's, uh, what, uh, what, what's normal. So, so I really like that approach because it, because it could really help people to um, frame, okay, 
yeah, yeah. You might not you don't, you might not want to talk like you um, stand on the DAF, but but you do want to model this rate uh, because it's actually not as bad as you think it is. Bingo. Cool. Yeah, I, um, I like that. So so what else uh, what uh, what else have you found that works with cluttering? You mean in in the therapy sessions? Yeah, um, yeah. So. And so one thing I um, like to do is when we want to address like language planning um, is when we, for example, read a story, then I help um, my client to identify, okay, what is the main idea and what are relevant details and what are irrelevant details? Because very often when, um, when people tell you a personal narrative, something they did, they might concentrate on irrelevant details, which makes it very hard for the listener then to understand what is the point of that story. And so we first um, practice it with given um, like little stories, but then of course we also want to go into the generalization for own narratives, for my own experiences and what is relevant and what might be irrelevant. Cool, and that's uh, that's that's really uh, that's that's really interesting too. And I wish uh, I wish I would have had some um, some stuff like that in speech in speech therapy because I think that's um, I think that's in ways a really advanced. Well, it seems really simple because because um, it's basically kind of like grade school stuff of of identifying the main point. But um, but that's something that I I, um, I don't think I like had. Nat like I, I don't think I naturally had that of, of being able to do something like that. And, and, and it reminds me of something that I, um, so, some, something that I use, especially when I have a really important speech to give that, um, um, uh, that, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of similar. Um, so, so what I do is I, um, I, find, um, I find a friend and, and I basically give my speech um, ju just like normal, um, kind of disjointed, ju um, jumping all over the place. Has important or um, has important details and unimportant details just kind of randomly mixed all together, and and then I ask my friend, hey, can you tell my story back to me? And and the cool the cool thing about that is is pretty much like it. Uh, my friend doesn't have to be a speech pathologist, just someone that doesn't have uttering, because pretty much everybody has the skill that I don't that I don't have, which is to be able to tell a story with, um, uh, um, in 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 your words. Emphasizing the important details, and um, and so and so, what I do is I listen. Um, I, I listen really carefully to that how they um, ha, um, how they how they organize it, and it's really really cool because uh, because especially if my friend can follow along with me, they can basically take my completely jumbled speech and turn it into something really good. And then uh, and then when I actually give my speech, I give my friend's version, not my version. And um, and and my fluency in that situation just goes um, way 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 up very very fast. So 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 that's uh, that that's really really similar to your um, your, your method of teaching um, um, teaching people. Hey, this is the story. This is the main point. So so I think those those two things are really along the same really along the same lines. And and to uh, to piggyback on that, <clears throat> as a disorder of language. Um, cluttering manifests itself also in written language. So, um, as you say, uh, along the same lines of getting your friend to retell your story, you can also actually write things out and work on being more cohesive in writing um, uh, as a way to at least call attention to uh, the, uh, the language planning aspect. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, that, uh, that's really interesting. Uh, one of my most popular videos is example of how a clutter types. That's the YouTube, um, and and I I I basically like typed out a um, uh, typed out a, a couple paragraphs, and and I um, I type pretty fast, but I type kind of all over the place. Write a little bit here, write a little bit here, write a little bit here. Um, so so the final uh, the final thing is really good and cohesive, but. The way that I got there is just a little bit different, and, um, and and one of the things one of the things that I often tell people is, well, I speak or I, I type a lot better than I speak, so let me uh, let me send you an email summary of this what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say. So so one of the things I um, I listened to 
the interview with um, with, with Charlie and Daniela Rossi and um, sister sister um, Carol, and um, and and Susie uh, Susie brought this up too about um, it, well it was really interesting because um, because Charlie um, Charlie said well uh, folks with cluttering often get uh, often get asked to repeat themselves and uh, and sister Carol said uh, no I that, that never happens to me. And and as I and as I was listening to that, I thought, oh yeah, th yeah, that never happens to me either. Uh, but then, but then immediately afterwards, I thought, well, I, I wish that happened to me. Um, um, but um, but um, but now it's been a few, now it's been a few weeks, and I and I actually remember I had one of my bosses that uh, that would always tell me, run that bus by me again. So so he never said, can you repeat yourself? But he um, he he was basically describing my cluttering of 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 a bus of speech and he it was basically like run that bus by me again so so i thought that was an interesting description of of cluttering um and um and and i, and I think like i think i think with me that if um uh, i uh, i think with me that because i am usually amazing so much that people don't think to ask me uh people don't think to ask me to repeat myself because they're like, well, I um, he he said a whole bunch, and I have no I have no idea what he said, and um, like 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 I um, I think I think people just don't know what to say in that situation, and, uh, because because they know that asking me to repeat myself probably isn't going to help very much. So, so so I think that's why I don't I personally don't get um, asked that question very much. Um, but but actually, I had a uh, or, or, or or a, a friend of mine who has dys dyslexia. Um, she uh, um, she would always tell people, hey, well, I I just I understand things differently, and so if I um, and so if I don't understand what you're saying, then I'll ask you to explain it in a different way. And and, and I found I, um, I found that just incredibly helpful. Like like and, and I was probably like, like when I was talking to her, I was probably cluttering just really really bad. Um, but but she didn't say, hey. Um, your speech is bad. Um, repeat, uh, repeat that in an uncluttered way. Um, the, the thing she said, and the thing she said instead, which she actually says to lots and lots of people, is, "Well, I didn't understand. Can you explain that to me in a different way?" And the cool thing about that is that it helped, uh, or it, it kind of forced me. Well, it forced me to think through it slow, slower, and more organized, and also to, and also like forcing me to explain it in a different way. Um, help help me to kind of coagulate my thoughts a little bit better too. I like that. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when we talk about speaking, that just another thought popped in my head, um, which I thought maybe we can mention it here is um, that um, the ICA also collaborated with Fluency Bank, and um, we are trying to collect. Um, speech samples of people who clutter. So Fluency Bank is um, um, like a, a website where you can upload or donate speech samples and they have quite a big um, um, resource on stuttered speech, but for cluttering, we are desperately looking for speech samples. Um, and that can be used, for example, for teaching, but also um, for example, as a speech therapist, I can use these resources and um, play samples in my sessions for maybe other clients who clutter so that they know, oh, I'm not the only person who has this and, oh, this is how another person sounds. And so just, um, I thought I want to throw that in um, here that um, if anyone who is listening here is willing to donate a speech sample, um, please get in contact either with um, the with us, with the ICA, um, and the, the person responsible for Fluency Bank is Nan Bernstein-Ratner. And um, we we would be so grateful to get more samples. Cool, and and so how, uh, what, what's the process of, of donating a sample? Is, is there a website where you can record yourself or, 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 or how, do, how does that actually work? So right now, um, it would work to get in contact with Nan Bernstein Ratner and email her, and then she, there is like a, a procedure um, 
how you can donate your sample and she will outline it. So, um, um, Charlie, can, can I, I heard you're looking the site up, so maybe you can you can help us. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, I just Googled Fluency Bank. Um, it looks like you can start at fluency.talkbank.org. I don't know if I, I don't know if that's correct, actually. Um, yes, and I'm just like looking at what yes. name, like in Look, our latest newsletter, Nan actually outlined the process as well, um, how to donate a sample. Yeah, so if you just go to our website and find our, um, look at the uh, uh, newsletter archives, and at least at least two of our uh, issues, we've had uh, an article about Fluency Bank. So that would give you guidelines. There's a little bit of paperwork to fill out um, to, uh, and then you just donate a speech sample. So that would be great. Okay, okay, uh, cool. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, Susie. Just uh, to make it easier, you don't even have to find the, the um, newsletter, but if you go on our website and on the tab consumers, and then there is a sub tab called get involved. If you click on that one, you come directly to the explanation talk bank, fluency bank. There is Nan's um, contact um, information, her email address and how to get in contact and how to donate a sample. Okay, okay, um, cool. And and I'll put a I'll put a link to the website on um, in the video description too. Great, so. great, thank you. Oh, and and, and um, speaking of speaking of recording, this uh, this is a question that I that I have because this this isn't my normal speech. Um, my uh, my normal speech is much less uh, fluid, and it's it, it's really interesting as I, uh, when I do interviews with uh, with folks with cluttering, and as soon as I um, as soon as I say okay, I I've stopped recording. Then, um, then, uh, then the speech, um, the speech level goes down, or, or or the number of disfluencies goes up. So, so there's something there's something magic about the recording button that makes uh, that makes speech temporarily better. So, so um, do either of you have have advice on like like if I'm uh, if I'm trying to record samples of me cluttering, how I can actually do that, um, and um, and get and get um, kind of close to my normal speech. That's a good question. Um, I, I don't know if you can um, maybe find a friend who clutters and uh, start a conversation and then randomly click on the record button and see what happens. Yeah, um, that's a uh, that's a great uh, that's a good idea. Uh, um, Susie, any any ideas about recording uh, recording myself or um, um, cluttering? Well, I I would think maybe. Um, not just talk a very short time, but um, prepare to talk a little bit longer. And then maybe a topic you you are excited about and excited to talk about. So um, for me, it's always when I'm talking, I get excited, then I get into the topic and my speech gets more natural because I'm thinking about what I wanna say and yeah, so so that might be helpful to try and get a, the most natural sample of your speech. Huh, and that's um, th uh, that's that's a really interesting idea about combining both of those together, both both a really long recording and something that um, something I'm excited about because um, because yeah, I can picture um, I can picture after like five um, after like five like the first five minutes are probably going to be really good, and then uh, and then minutes five five on, especially if it's something I'm very passionate about, then, um, then, uh, th then it would become more and more natural. So, so that's a great idea. So, so I think we're, I think we're almost out of time. Um, what's, uh, what, uh, what's your, uh, what's both of your final messages for us and anything we, um, anything we skipped over that you want to go back to before we finish? I would well, uh, borrow some language from the National Stuttering Association. Um, uh, their, one of their taglines is it's okay to stutter. I'd say it's also okay to clutter. Um, again, um, I think most people who clutter don't know that they clutter. Uh, that's not true for stuttering. Stuttering is the opposite of that. So um, um, I think awareness is, is more important than, than anything. Just knowing that, that this is something that you do will help you be a more effective communicator. 
Cool. And Susie? Well, I I would say um, try and and um, get involved, try and get information, um, connect with people. One way to connect uh, is the upcoming World Congress. We will have a joint World Congress on cluttering and stuttering this year again. Um, it's the second one, and um, it is for people who clutter, people who stutter, for clinicians, for researchers, and our goal is to bring everyone together and talk together and learn from each other. And um, that would be also a, a great way to, to get involved and to, to make connections. Cool. Um, thanks. Um, thanks very much for inviting us um, uh, us all to that. And I want to say um, thank you very, very much for all of your work with with cluttering and with the ICA. That's that's just super, super important. Um, back when I first found out about cluttering, um, all all I could find online was Ken St. Louis's um, Stuttering Association pamphlet. Um, and now we've got um, now now we've got just so much really, really cool stuff online. And thanks so much for for both of you for, uh, for for making that for organizing it and for making such a cool great resource for everyone. And thanks to you too, Joseph, for helping us get the word out about clutter. Definitely, cool. Cool. thank you. Okay, um, great, um, great talking to you, and thanks very much, and goodbye. Bye.